And so uh, when uh, when he came to Bakersfield, he went over to Bakersfield. My mom moved over. They were having uh, they had some marital problem. I got a brother that's two years younger than I am. And when I was about three or so, um, my brother was one, and my mom and dad were having problems. They'd been married for like three or three and a half years, and and um, and so my dad, who was uh, kind of a wild guy at times, also and and uh, you know my mom said I'm not going to take this anymore, and so he talked to my dad mom my grandmother and and uh, she uh, she said well i don't blame you and uh and so they um arranged for my mom to and the two boys to uh she wanted to go to bakersfield and that was their in- original intention where the, they were all originally going to go was to bakersfield um to go because that bakersfield california is a is a real uh it's at the bottom of the san joaquin valley and uh, in one of the most fertile areas in the United States, uh, there's so much agriculture and uh, you know cotton, potatoes, there's oil out there. There's so that meant jobs. Yeah, and so uh, she decided I'm going to go there and, and get away from this. So she took the two boys and moved and uh, went out and stayed with uh, my dad's aunt. And uh, and it wasn't long after that, maybe uh, four or five months that. Uh, that her family and his family all moved uh, out to Bakersfield right after she did. And your dad was still in Arizona at this point. Yeah, they were still. He, he and his family and my mom's family were all uh, were, were all in Arizona, and uh, but they all just said, you know, got to go. And my and my dad, who had had a band around here in Phoenix for three or four years, and became really good friends with a lot of the musicians and became quite popular. You know, in his own little way, he wasn't a singer really at that time. He was the guitar player, and um, that's where he really started playing lead guitar more. After he put the steel guitar away, uh, started playing lead guitar, and so he said, "I'm I'm going to Bakersfield too." So he went to uh, to Bakersfield, and it wasn't long. He landed a job at uh, a place called the Blackboard, and they would work their rear ends off. Um, just uh, every night, they'd work. You know, he told me, uh, you know, there was a lot of times, a lot of nights, they'd work eight straight hours and never take a break. And uh, I can only imagine what that's like. But uh, it did uh, it did hone his uh, his craft in, in, in music, in singing. It built his voice up. It um, made him a really great guitar player. And, uh, in, in fact... Uh, uh, that was about the time that a lot of uh, country music artists, big who were bigger, had big big names, uh, would come down and they would play in the blackboard and they would see him sing and play and stuff. And so a lot of the artists said, "Man, I want to get that guy on my record." And so they would uh, hire him. He'd go down to Los Angeles and and play uh, two or three times a week. He'd play in a uh, uh, you know on somebody's recording session, whether or not it's a uh, uh, an old Fern Husky song, or he played on a lot of the, the pop, the I know old, G- early rock and roll songs. I know Gene Shepard told me that he he played on a lot of her early records. Yep, he sure did. Uh, Gene Shepard, Fern Husky, Tommy Collins. Uh, uh, you know, I think he played on some Hank Thompson records. There, there's a ton of them that he played on, and and, um, and and so that was where he decided. Now he really needs to shoot for a. Uh, a recording contract, and so the the gentleman at Capitol Records, uh, his name was Ken Nelson, and uh, he was the A and R man, the uh, the top dog as far as country music went at Capitol Records. He saw him play, and he liked him. And my dad would ask him, you know, let me let me record a couple songs, let me do that, some, you know. And he asked him several times, and Ken said, kept saying, No, you're a guitar player, you're not a singer, you know, and that kind of stuff. And so, uh, you know, my dad would just. Thinking, my day, you know, thinking my day will come, and finally did, and, and he got a recording contract. And uh, I, I guess it was probably about 1959, you were probably about 10 years old, somewhere around that, and that's when Under Your Spell Again came out, and that was your dad's first top five hit, his first really big record. So I was wondering, do you have uh, do you have any clear memories of when that happened, of hearing it on the radio or something well, like that? Well, I, I do, as a matter of fact. Um, and um, and I was about eleven years old, eleven or twelve, and um, uh, the 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 good thing that that I had uh, growing up was I always had a lot of support from both of both of my families. My mom had great support of her brothers and sisters and mom, and uh, and my dad 
had great support of, of his brother and his sisters and his mom and his dad. And, uh, and so we, we were constantly in contact with, with both sides, both grandparents and all my aunts and uncles. So we became a very tight family. And um, uh, so anytime my dad had a new record out, she would be sure that we got a copy of it, and she'd be sure we'd listen to it. And I can remember, you know, for hours and hours at a time, sitting and listening to his albums or his new 45 or whatever it happened to be. And, um, you know, I, I really didn't know much. You know, I guess I was a little bit too young at that time when I looked back uh, uh, that he wasn't having much success in his in his early times. And, you know, he was really starting to worry. And, and um, so at one point he worried enough to move out of Bakersfield and moved up to Washington for two or three years and then came back after um, he uh, after actually was after Under Your Spell again was recorded. Uh, it was He was actually living up in in Washington at that time, and if you'll notice, he had a steel guitar and, and fiddle on most of his early songs. It didn't really feature guitar that much. And uh, and so when that record came out, it was funny because then we started hearing that song quite a lot, and we'd never experienced that uh, that much before with one of his records. And so my mom said, you know, it's a, it's a good record. It's going to be a, you know, a big hit for him. And, um, you know, we were happy, but, um, you know, because he lived in Washington for, uh, for that three years or so, we didn't get a chance to see him too much. And he would, he would just, uh, come down to Bakersfield every so often. And, um, but, uh, but I, but I, I felt like I was always in touch with him because, uh, because of his mom and his dad and, and my aunts and uncles and my mom, uh, who was, you know, like I said, uh, it didn't matter if they were divorced, they were still friends and, and, he was the father of her kids, and so... Uh, looking back, um, that must have been really... I'm sorry to interrupt, but I was just going to say, looking back, that must have been really good because uh, that they were friends and on good terms because uh, it, it certainly goes the other way in a lot of relationships, so that could have turned well, it, out it, ugly. It, it really does, and, you know, it, um, it, it pains me. It, I, you know, I have a heartache every time I see, you know, uh, a bad marriage ending and because I know these people will hardly ever talk anymore other than through the kids and uh, and that certainly wasn't the way that it was my mom um my mom was a big part of uh of, of the bakersfield music sound you know she uh, she recorded for capitol records had seven albums out and and she was a uh, she was quite popular in bakersfield as well uh and um uh, and so um she was always out singing you know if he would be uh, for instance uh he played in the band uh at a at a place uh, there in Bakersfield, and my mom, uh, when she first got started, uh, you know, she really couldn't break it into uh, getting into a band or anything. So she served cocktails. She was a cocktail waitress, and uh, once in a the, the guys in the band would uh, yell at her over the microphone to come up and and uh, and sing some songs. And so she'd get up and she'd sing for ten or fifteen minutes, and and then uh, after a while, she'd say, "I've got to get back down here. The tips are a lot better down there than they are up here." And so she'd uh, she'd run back out, and boy, she was really popular. They called her the singing waitress for a long time, and and um, she was very popular. But um, yeah, it was a uh, it was just a it was just a real fun fun time being uh, around Bakersfield and all those musicians. And and um, I, I look back and I just think of how blessed I was to have been a small part of it. Now, we're, uh, well, I think it was around this time uh, that your father gave you your first guitar. Uh, am I correct, or, or was, um, am I a little off on the timeline? No, yeah, that's about right. It was, um, I, I'm going to say it was about in the you know, fifth, sixth, seventh grade, probably sixth grade. And, um, yes, he, uh, he gave me my first guitar. It was a Martin, really nice D28, and, and um, I just loved that guitar. And, um, but I didn't play it very often. I just loved kind of plunking around on it in my room. And I never really didn't have anybody to, that knew how to play that I knew. Um, my dad, like I said, did not live in Bakersfield. So it spent most of its time underneath my bed. Um, and, um, and, you know, it was not until I was about, uh, 13 or 14, uh, I was out in the, in the driveway playing basketball with several of my friends, and um, 